everybody. This is Emily with Destiny City Film Festival, and we are pumped to have some folks here with us from the short documentary All for One. Um, and I'm going to throw it over to them to introduce themselves. Awesome. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Luke Grigg. I am a documentary filmmaker based out of Washington State. Um, do a lot of work with UCLA Athletics uh, down in Los Angeles. And um, I'm going to pass it over to one of my uh, close athlete friends, Natalie Cho, to introduce herself. Yes, thank you, Luke. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you all for having us. Um, I'm Natalie Cho. As Luke said, I'm on the UCLA women's basketball team. Um, this would be my fifth year on the team. And uh, I'm from Dallas, Texas. And I was in this film. Awesome. And thanks for the reminder, Luke, that you're based in Washington. Um, Quincy, Washington, I had to look it up. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> a lot of people do, even people from nearby. But yeah, uh, yeah I'm from a uh, small town, Quincy, Washington, center of the state. My dad is an onion farmer, so. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Typically, different. that's how I introduce myself as Luke from the onion farm, so. <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. I, I, have, I have close family members who um, grew up on an onion and potato farm, so. I totally awesome. get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, great. I digress. Um, thank you both for being here with us. We're really excited to have this short documentary in our festival. Um, and we're really excited to have this opportunity to chat more and provide, you know, more conversation for our audience. Um, typically we do have that in person and but this is the next best thing, even kind of better because we can connect folks from all over the country um, totally. to talk about our films. So again, thank you for being here. Um, so you mentioned that you're close friends. Um, so I want to kind of get some background on how did this project project come to be and how did it all unfold? Yeah, I, I guess I'll start mainly just because it's, it's a long journey. Um, <laughs> uh, randomly, I used to work for UCLA women's basketball. Um, let's see, back in 2017 was the last year that I was with them. Um, but prior to that, Natalie Cho, uh, Cho, sorry, Natalie Cho had um, her and I uh, had sort of a friendship in that uh, I was helping recruit her uh, at UCLA. So I knew a lot about her and uh, she maybe knew about me. <laughs> but uh, throughout the years, um, Natalie ended up coming to UCLA and um, we were so excited. Uh, I ended up leaving the team, but I've continued to uh, not only work alongside them in small projects and things like that, but just continue to get to know each of the players um, just to talk about sports and media and then just, just similar interests. Um, I know a lot of people on the women's basketball team. And uh, yeah, when we first uh, thought of the idea, I think to, to talk about Natalie's story or anything like that, it was before it was even a possibility in regards to, in terms of what projects we were working on. Um, we have a coworker, um, Karen Nickdow. She's the creative director at UCLA Women's Basketball. Um, she is even closer friends with Natalie because she gets to still work with her on the day to day. Um, and I, I, I was talking to Karen. I said, hey, uh, the women's basketball coach approached me about doing a documentary on an, on any idea that we really want to. But just uh, we want to pick something from UCLA women's basketball. And uh, I, I, I Karen mentioned the idea of Natalie. And I said I was thinking the exact same thing. And so we just texted Natalie in that very moment saying, hey, Natalie, like we know your journey has been like really long getting, you know, to this place um, in basketball. And uh, we think we would like to do that. We actually went, <laughs> we texted her and took her out to Bazookis. Um, we went and got some um, food and just like surprised her. And then we said, what do you think about doing this? And then Natalie, I can let you tell your reaction and everything that transpired from there if you want. But um, yeah, it was just organic, like just from knowing each other and knowing Natalie's story, we just went on from there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to follow up, I like I had no idea when we went to BJ's, right, uh, for dinner, mm -hmm. that this was even uh, why we were meeting. I thought we were just like, friends, Luke's back in town, we're gonna have a dinner. But yeah, Luke and Karen were like, we were thinking about doing a documentary about me and like my life. And I was like, no, because like, I didn't think there was enough in my life that is like for like a documentary and so they're like but Luke being the frick, the creative genius he is he was like oh I I can pull some stuff out so I was like okay like if you think that there's enough and that I can do a good job and like help y'all then absolutely I um, would love the opportunity and so yeah from then on it went the process was like really quick um, kind of we 
my mom came in town um, to come watch some games um, and conference and we just all sat down and talked about what our vision was and what we wanted to do with this film. And so, yeah, and then from then on, it's, it's great. Yeah, wh what were your mom's thoughts about, about the project and being it and involving her story with your story? Yeah, when I told her, she was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, that's such a great opportunity. And I was like, you're probably going to be in it a lot because she is such a huge influence in my life. And she was like, oh, like, why? No, like, I don't, it's all, this is about you, not me. And I'm like, no, like, our story, uh, my story is her story and her story is mine. So we're just really connected in that way. So she was really excited. Mm -hmm. She has a great experience. She has great stories to tell also. Mm -hmm. so that she could also be a part of it too. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't have your story without her story, obviously. She's so important to that. So that's cool. That that would have been interesting to work with your mom alongside your mom in a film and about your life. So I'm sure that was pretty special to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind of what were the goals when you start first started putting the film together? Like what did you want to accomplish or what what do you, what did you want folks to get out of watching it? I can kick off on that one um, if you want. Uh, so as a production company, Circle 3 Productions, um, and even just myself personally throughout the years in developing my documentary style, I've just really wanted to focus on working with, uh, I, I call it with communities rather than just in them. Um, and so, you know, not knowing Natalie and her knowing my filmmaking process and or even watching a lot of the stuff that I'd, I'd created before. Uh, it was an opportunity to uh, create a documentary film in a new, unique way and really pressing into that, working with um, the people that are in the film rather than just in it. So like Natalie said, her mom wasn't technically so into the idea of being on camera in the beginning, which was totally fine. Um, there was never any pressure. I feel like we even Natalie or I really placed on her. It was more, hey, why don't we just all get into a room and just talk about the story? What is your story and um, how can we present it in a way that maybe um, you know you have never had it presented before? I think one thing that people overlook when they hear stories coming from, especially D1 athletes who are on these huge platforms all the time is yes, they're on these huge platforms, but coming from someone who worked in the media of um, uh, division one sports, uh, you start to notice that a lot of these athletes' stories are told a lot, but they're told a lot very quickly. They'll get five minutes here after a game, or they'll get five minutes here on a bus ride, on a phone call. Um, but having a really well-made, put-together piece about someone's life and, and really in every single way saying directly what they meant it to be said rather than having it chopped up in different ways is... Um, was such a big goal of mine. Um, just working with Natalie. I mean, she's so sweet. I told her right from the beginning, I was like, Hey, like, I want to do this differently. Like, I want you to be in the editing room. I want you to be like, be like behind the camera with me talking to your mom. I want you to come up with the questions with me, go through the transcriptions, the translations, all this stuff. And so that was our main goal going into it, it was like, we want to do this together. We want to make sure that um, every single word in your documentary, you feel accurately represents you and your mom. And so typically a documentary, you know, it might be, um, I give her an idea of what I'm interviewing her about. And then she would go and uh, when we're interviewing and just give me her answers and I'd chop them up the way I wanted to. That was not what we did here. Um, in this, we actually did uh, quite a bit of pre uh, interviewing, just audio recordings, talking to each other. Um, figuring out, okay, what are the elements of the story that we want to involve? What are the elements that are there and are true, but are um, not necessarily what we want to present to the, like, to the world, because those are just part of Natalie's story that she gets to keep for herself. And um, so like learning, still allowing that vulnerability of natural documentary to pour out, but then afterwards getting to take a step back after you're listening to all the audio interviews and saying, okay, now as an editor, here's what I would say we should make the story. And Natalie, is that okay with you? And if it's not, where do you want the story to go? And um, there was quite a few times when we were able to do that and have those conversations. And I couldn't have done it with anyone else other than someone that I knew already. And just um, working through that process and, and having that as our goal, I think really um, made it not only special for me as the filmmaker, but just watching Natalie and her mom go through the process, I feel like made it really special for them too. So, um, but I'll let her speak to that part. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I could say like, when we finally got the final 
products and my mom and I, I was back home during quarantine in Dallas watching with her and we just like started crying just like watching it the first time because like I think we never really shared like just being able to watch both of our journeys together and how far we've become and after all that hard work um, it just meant a lot to us to share that moment together but um, yeah to answer your question um, on the UCLA women's basketball team our coach really um, our main two goals um, in college were like who we become and who we impact and who and I really thought that this was a great opportunity to um, really dive into the people that I wanted to impact during my time at UCLA um, I always say like in this season of life my main goal is to influence young girls and boys who look like me um, to do whatever they want, whether that be play basketball or play sports or anything else, just to defy the stereotypes. And I really felt that Luke and I uh, really harnessed that in the documentary um, and just following your dreams, um, no matter what they are and no matter what society tells you, you can do and uh, working hard. Absolutely, that's a very important story to share um and it's so special like in the way you described how you went about it luke like really involving natalie and her mom in every step of the way and i think that really lended a hand to make a short documentary the short documentary so like concise and you and and you got the story in there with the arc and like you know you still got in, engaged and entertained by it and that can be hard to do in a short film let alone a short documentary like you said because could be a lot of work for a short amount of time, but you really <laughs> made the most of it, I think. Um, so uh, Natalie, what was it like seeing that side of it, like editing and the behind the scenes production and all that? Yeah, it's a lot of work. I remember, so we um, shot like a few scenes um, in downtown LA, and then we also flew to my hometown um mckinney to take like interview shots with my mom and the amount of equipment like i was like i cannot believe luke carries all of this to all of his places like i would have back problems like i would just be sore and then like the editing i like i could imagine and then my mom and i also took part into translating and putting um mandarin chinese subtitles on the bottom and that just that took a minute, that took a while. And I was like, wow, Luke literally does so much work and it probably takes up so much time, but he is so amazing at it. And he's just like such a creative genius, like I said. And it, it just like, he makes it look so easy. And I just, I'm such a huge fan of Luke. So. Yeah, you I- make me cry already. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have back problems because- <laughs> just It's great. Yeah, I think if, if you've never done it before, you have no idea of like all the little factors you have to think about and equipment and like organization and everything. So yes, I, I think filmmaking is not for everyone, <laughs> but um, those who do it, you know, can do it really well because they're meant for it. So um, so I, I know the film I think was shared with uh, UCLA or at PAC-12 um, at some point and like have your teammates watched it? Other folks that you that you know at UCLA, Natalie? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we aired it on um, over quarantine, and a lot of my coaches watched, and they all reached out and were really supportive. Um, and we just were like, wow, I didn't even know half of the things that were shown in the documentary, and then it just puts like perspective like in a new light and what my mom and myself went through and also my mom is like a coach um a skills coach back home in McKinney and so all of her students and um, all of the students parents were like texting her and saying that's incredible um and a lot of my friends who did my childhood friends who are still my friends um, who did know my journey were like it's just really touching to know like what we've been through and stuff mm -hmm. yeah that's wonderful um, and Luke, are, are, are you submitting the film to other festivals or what's what's your path look like? Yeah, uh, well, the, you, you all are our first festival to submit to. So you kind of, uh, by selecting it, made us think maybe we should try for more. Um, nice. But the reality, too, is when you're working um, and just in the, in, uh, with athletes, especially in Division One, there's a lot of um, conversations that have to be had about, you know, what you can put out there and not put out there. 
Um, and so that was actually a, a big conversation that we've been having with UCLA, um, the head coach. I'm really close friends with her as well and their whole legal department. Um, and they gave us, you know, the green light to, you know, start pushing this film out there. Um, and so that was kind of where this all started. So we have uh, since um, applied to a few other film festivals, but you guys are first. So. Yay. Yeah. That's exciting. Uh -huh. I'm uh, yeah. Oh man, I, any chance to share a new story like this and be the, you know, be able to share with our community is a privilege. So oh, yeah. um, we're excited to have it for the world, well, I guess not technically world premiere, but you know, first festival yeah. premiere. Mm -hmm. That's super exciting. Um, yeah, it's definitely, well, and I just might add to that too, like uh, for us and Natalie, her and I both, um, the idea when we first came up with this film as well was um, we didn't even have film festivals in our mind. We were just wanting to the reason we even put uh, a mandarin chinese burned into the film was because we said we want this film to be just taken and like put out there to whoever possible um whether or not that's even on our platforms um like you know at most of the times as a filmmaker you're wanting to really hold tight onto something and just not let anyone else have it um but you know knowing natalie's story and i'm sure i mean you've already watched the film emily but for those mm -hmm. who haven't um when you watch it and you realize the such unique that journey that Natalie is on and how there are so many other kids out there feeling like they are also the only ones on that journey. Um, it just made this film so much more important that we just get that film out there to whoever we put as many eyes as we can have on it. Um, and so that's, that's why that we have so many conversations about why can we please put this film out, you know, with, within the, the departments at UCLA and all this stuff is, um, we really believe in this story. I mean, I know Natalie does because it is her story, but I also and Karen, our coworker, the head coach at UCLA, couldn't say enough about, um, yeah, just even even just this opportunity to put it in y'all's film festival is um, such a big deal for us. So awesome. Well, I mean, it's such a unique documentary, like on so many levels, as far as involving D1 ath athletics and. Um, you know, an immigration story and, you know, dreaming and, you know, this, all those things make it very unique. And so I could see this being a fit for festivals and for a lot of other platforms to get the story out. So um, I think, I think it's going to, it's going to be up, it's going to be out there for sure. People are going to be able to see it. So, um, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I want to remind folks who are watching, if you haven't watched this all for One plays in our Real to Real Shorts program, um, a bunch of documentary shorts. So um, definitely check that out. Um, was there anything else you wanna make sure folks know or any, you know, anything else that you wanna share? From my perspective, mainly just, uh, I would just encourage you all to uh, continue to follow along with Natalie's journey and story. Um, because her story isn't just her, I mean, it is her own, but it's also the story of so many people out there. And um, the best way, the best thing we can do to support is to support those that are trailblazing that path. So um, I just, uh, I, again, I thanked Natalie a million times, but just as a friend and everything, um, she's such a wonderful spirit and I can't wait to see um, where the story goes. Um, so, yeah. And thank you to UCLA Athletics for <laughs> allowing us this opportunity, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, to follow Luke, just thank you so much for even seeing um, this vision that my story could be something so incredible and put it into such beautiful ways. Um, and yeah, I just want people to take away that you can just follow your dreams and just defy all those stereotypes and what people say about you. Um, if you have people around you who really support you and love you, um, you can do anything. And so, yeah, I'd like to thank UCLA Women's Basketball and also Coach Corey and Luke and Karen for all the hard work. Um, truly appreciate it. So, yeah, so you're in, you're playing this season, right, Natalie? So yeah. what do we have to look forward to? Um, we're, gonna, we're going to Pac-12 and also NCAA Championship. So we're still in the middle of it. We're doing amazing. And so hopefully good. we're going to going. Um, but we have a really good team um, this year, and we just – are the sky's the limit so can't wait to for sure yeah i echo what luke said uh, everyone follow along with natalie and you're not just your basketball career but whatever happens whatever you get to do next um we we want to support that so let us know if there's anything we can ever do for you both of you um keep us updated on you know what's going on next um and 
In the meantime, thank you for sharing your story with us. It's a very important and special story. We're honored to have it in our festival and to share it. And our audience, I'm sure, will, will love it. So appreciate it so much. Thank you both for your time. Take care. Thank you.